All right, here's the inside of a stock, the stock airplane. You have your elevator and your rudder servo. I wouldn't change these. I, I'm still using my original servos to this day. I've been flying these things for three years in a brushless system. The stock servos work just fine. This is your stock receiver. And it's 72 megahertz system. Here it is. It has the, uh, the frequency it uses. Here's your stock speed controller. Your stock ECS speed controller. And you look down in there, it just threads its way. Here's the uh, plug for your battery from your speed controller. And it threads all the way down into the front to the motor. And there are three connectors down there on the motor, I believe. That you can just disconnect the motor itself. So if you're going to fly this thing stock, you have everything you need. All you got to do is plug in the battery and you can use it your radio over here takes eight double A's the only reason I did not continue using that transmitter to this day is because a four point uh, two point four gigahertz radio system uses only four batteries that's a, a lot of money being saved there just in the batteries for the transmitter. That's the reason I changed that over. But it works just fine. I recommend not flying at stock for the reasons I said. In the videos I've watched, it seems very underpowered, it, <clears throat> very difficult to get it in the air, very difficult to keep it stabilized in the air. Some people have had success with it, but complained, and some people have just totally destroyed their planes or crashed them trying to get to fly. So the best thing to do, <clears throat> in my opinion, and in others' opinions, is to go to a brushless system. A brushless system right off the bat before you even put it together. And the way to do that is got to buy a brushless uh, equipment. And I'll show you what you need for a brushless equipment. While you can use the same uh, servos and the same receiver and the same radio the only thing you have to replace is the motor itself the brush motor to a brushless motor the speed controller you're going to need to replace it with a brushless speed controller and the battery you're not going to use that nickel metal hydride battery anymore you're going to use a lipo battery so those are the three main things you got to replace all right now as i said if you're going to go with a brushless setup, there are three things you absolutely have to replace. You're going to remove the you're going to remove the stock ESC speed controller and replace it with a brushless. You, I recommend a uh, I don't even know if you can read that. Basically, what it says is it's a 20 amp sensorless brushless ESC. I recommend 25 amp, but my first one, this is my first one I put in the airplane, it's a 20 amp. It comes with your, uh, an e, EC3 battery connector, and your cable that goes to your receiver. It goes right into the stock 72 megahertz receiver just fine. So you're going to need to replace the speed controller. And you're going to have to replace the motor. This is the one I currently operate in my planes, my Harbor Freights. It's an in-runner. And the reason I went with an in-runner is because the plane already has a gearbox. And I didn't want to have to figure out a way to install an outrunner setup and how to mount it. When I already had a gearbox that would hold an engine or a motor. What I use is a Part 370 4100 KV motor. This is as high as a KV that I can get that is a 3 millimeter shaft that will work with the current gearbox and the current setup on the airplane. If I go any higher, 
I, I went and bought a uh, 5400 kV motor thinking I could use that and get more speed out of it but after I bought it I realized that this wants a 7.4 volt system not a 3S 11.1 system so I don't really gain anything in the end so I didn't use it so as high as I can go I believe is the 4100 kV motor this is what's in all of the videos that you see my plane flying it's about as fast and as powerful as I'm going to get with this type of setup if you want to go faster and have more power you can just go with the uh, the outrunner setup which uses the outrunner mount and I'll show you that in a moment but this is what I currently use it has a pinion gear on it that that runs in runs with the uh, spur gear on the gearbox this pinion gear is a 14 tooth pinion gear when you buy a motor a part 370 motor it comes with a mounting plate that goes into your gearbox and it comes with a set of pinion gears but it does not come with a 14 tooth it comes with a collection of 10 tooth gears and 12 tooth gears if you use those on this shaft and you mount this motor under the gearbox it's not going to be big enough in diameter for the teeth to engage the spur gear you need a 14 tooth one and when I bought my uh, collection of pinion gears you can find a lot of them on the internet now they're more difficult to find I've, I can find one uh, to order a place I can order one set but they're no longer brass I don't know what they are but they're about the same size I would say you're probably it's probably okay just to take the gear off your old brushed motor when you take when you remove it they tell you not to reuse these gears because they're press fit I think it's just fine given this size of the airplane that we're gonna be flying the hover freight plane it's not overly powered you can pry off that you're not going to use that brushed motor anyway so if you can get something in there I have a puller I can pull it right off but if you can find a way to pull that gear right off the shaft you can press fit it onto the new motor using a small uh, quarter inch drive socket to line it up with and you can put it in a vise and press it right on to that same location use Loctite so that it locks on there and it will work it, it's a little tricky it's a lot of work to do just to put an in runner in and use your gearbox that's why you know a lot of people just go with the outrunner setup it saves them that hassle and you can do that but if you do decide to do that you're going to need the uh, the outrunner mount instead of instead of mounting your motor on your gearbox you're going to have a whole new motor mount set up you can then you can order a stick mount outrunner setup it screws right onto the stick mount exactly like the gearbox does and you can install an outrunner motor on the front that will get you away from the problem of needing to get a spur uh, a pinion gear because you're not going to be driving a gearbox so you're not going to need that it's just going to be a, a direct shaft outrunner motor and it comes with a prop adapter to go on it the reason I don't like that idea to this day you know, is every time I see somebody online who has used an outrunner motor on a Harbor Freight P51 granted they fly faster and they're more powerful so if you can do it by all means go that way but everybody seems to have trouble getting a prop spinner for a P51 to go on it because the prop spinner that comes with your airplane is set up for a three millimeter shaft it's not going to go on an outrunner motor so you're not going to use it you're going to have to find another spinner 
It's very unfortunate. And most of the time I look at videos of, with people who are flying an Outrunner motor on their Harbor Freight P51, they don't have a prop spinner. They just use the prop adapter cone. And so the airplane doesn't look like a, a scale P51, mainly because you don't have the big prop spinner on the, the nose cone on there. So that's the one of the reasons why I went with the inrunner in a gearbox so I can still use the stock spinner that goes on the, the airplane. Okay, so now you know you have to have a you have to have a brushless speed controller, you have to have a brushless motor of one type or another, either to go on the outrunner mount or to go on your existing gearbox for an inrunner. The other thing you're going to need is a LiPo battery. This is an E-Flight 3S. You're going to go 3S. 3S, 11.1 volt, 1350 milliamp hour battery. Now, most of the time you're going to find these are just going to be 1300 milliamp hours. You see more of those out there than you do the 1350s. No big difference. But the reason I got this is because in the compartment for the P51, this fits better. I'll show you why in a minute. Looking into your your cockpit compartment, this is the stock, the new one, the new airplane. You'll see there's not a lot of room for a battery, especially if you're going to use a stock receiver. And I use a stock receiver for a long time. But the short battery, the 1350 slides back in there. There's a little pocket in there, a little notch. It slides in about this far. And it goes in there just fine. I'll show you on my other airplane how it goes in. If you was to get a longer battery, a 3S battery, longer than this, it's going to have a hard time fitting between the receiver and this wall. These, these wires are going to be gone. I'll show you that in a minute. You can do is you can get a this is an 18, an E-Flight 1800 milliamp hour 3S battery. It's a little thinner and it will go in and just barely squeak by the, that receiver. You may have to shave a little bit off the side if you was to do that. Now if you was a Go bold and, and just go right off the bat, buy a new smaller uh, 2.4 gigahertz receiver because you have a 2.4 gigahertz radio system and you want to use it. You'd be able to get a smaller receiver and, and a full size battery would fit in there real easily. But if you're going to stick with the stock radio and, and a stock receiver, you're not going to get a full size 3S battery to squeeze in there. So that's why I went with the shorter 1350. And that works just fine.